Hi, I'm Will Gerling. I'm a sports and performance nutritionist, and today I'm talking to you about milk. In today's study, it is a meta-analysis paper that came out in 2016 and covers a lot of other meta-analyses papers as well. So it's really comprehensive. The, st the papers within this one are 144 papers reviewed and many of those papers are also meta-analyses papers, which have you know several hundred papers themselves. So it is very comprehensive. Within the deep dive that we're gonna look at in milk and its effect on health primarily, we are going to look at obesity and type two diabetes cancer, bone fracture and osteoporosis, cardiovascular disease. I first and foremost want to say that this video is not an attack on veganism and I'm also not trying to sway people's moral choices. This is purely looking at science about dairy and its effect on health. Let's go into obesity. In obesity, we saw that children who drink more milk have a reduction in obesity levels, a reduction of 0.65% minor, but reduction in body fat, and a reduction to 13% risk to becoming obese. There's another really great paper that looks at the effects of obesity in adult individuals. There was 579,832 participants. 43,118 of those had type 2 diabetes. This was a 12-month study looking at people's intake of dairy over that year, it was seen that the more people drank of milk, they saw a reduction in incidence of obesity and even a reduction in type two diabetes. This is because there seems to be a relationship with milk and postprandial, so post-feeding glucose uptake. This seems to be mainly related to the fact that it just fills you up a bit more possibly aids in insulin sensitivity and slows down digestion. Next, we have cardiovascular disease. There's a paper by a guy called Sodomar Matu, who did 200 to 300 mils of milk every day, saw a reduction in the risk of cardiovascular disease by 7%. There was also a paper by a guy called Hu et al, who's, who had people taking on 300 mils of milk a day and saw a reduction in cardiovascular disease risk by seven to eight percent. There was also a reduction in hypertension and stroke risk. The overall conclusion within cardiovascular disease is that it saw a general reduction in cardiovascular disease. <laughs> osteoporosis and bone density. Milk and dairy doesn't actually have any effect on adults and your reduction risk of osteoporosis or bone fractures. It has the biggest impact on children and adolescents and with more children and adolescents who are now becoming vegan and not consuming enough calcium there is being an increase in mal malforming bones, poor bone density in children of that age and bone density, poor growth, and even a rise in such diseases as rickets. Next, we have cancer. Now, there's lots of different forms of cancer. I looked over lung, pancreatic, bladder, gastric, breast, colorectal, and prostate. So quite a few different areas there that it looked at. And it mainly assessed risk. It seems that Consuming milk on a regular basis does reduce your risk of cancer. Ralston et al. saw a reduction of 26% risk for colorectal cancer in males and equivocal in females. So only positive there when taking one pint of milk per day. Zhang et al. also saw a reduction of 6 to 10% in breast cancer risk in females, consuming, I believe it was four to 600 mils of milk per day. Prostate cancer did either see equivocal data or a slight rise in risk for males for regular consumption of milk. But the increase in the risk of prostate cancer compared to the decrease in risk of colorectal cancer, which is the most common cancer in Western countries, actually mitigated that. It was more beneficial to have milk and reduce your chance of colon rectal cancer compared to prostate cancer. Um, 
What's really interesting about all this research as well is that there doesn't, there's not a lot of research currently out there on the new milks that you're finding, almond milk, soya milk, um, rice milk, oat milk, all these kind of things. When you look at the ingredients of milk, it is literally just milk. But when you look at the ingredients list of almond milk, even unsweetened, you're gonna see emulsifiers, stabilizers, and preservatives, maybe some gums, depending on the product, meaning that's a really processed product. There's also gonna be fortification of there with like B vitamins and calcium and so on, uh, which is, is a good thing but they're not naturally occurring. They have been added to that product. And then also if you start looking at the sweetened products, they're also then gonna be primarily sugar as the second ingredient is what you'll find. And some of them can be quite high in calories more so than milk, especially if you look at the full fat versions of maybe like oat milk. What do I think about all of this? I think milk is getting a bad rep because one dude on a Netflix documentary was like, it's bovine calf growth fluid. And I think a lot of people haven't done the research. They see the scare factors by game changes and things like this. And when you look at the data and you look at the research, which is referenced on the game changes website and read through it like I have, you'll find a lot of those papers are inclusive of other items such as heavily processed meats, lots of red meats, things like this. It also, a lot of those studies don't account for exercise and things like this. If we are exercising high vegetable, high fruit in intake individuals, and we have milk of about what seems to be 200 mils to 500 mils of milk per day, it only be benefits us in a positive way. So would you ask, Will, are you a milk drinker? I would say, yes, I am. And I would recommend milk. Milk is also one of the best things to have post-workout. It comes with carbohydrate. It comes with all your essential amino acids. It comes in a ratio that if with flavored milk is perfect for a post-workout period, which is amazing for children who are exercising. An ideal choice for anyone who doesn't want to take protein supplements or have a meal straight after a workout. It is a cheap and inexpensive option to get protein into your diet and to supplement meals. The data is here, the paper I will reference into the video down below and have a read, have a check it out if you want. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you drink milk, if you don't drink milk, check it down below. Also, head down to my website. I'm doing a blog post on this and there's also a bunch of recipes on there for you to check out. So let me know what your thoughts are. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.